Hey guys, how's it going? Phil Montelioni, the book peddler, coming to you from my shop in Smithville Flats, New York. If you haven't, I hope you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Book Peddler. You stay up to date on book picks, in-store, out-store activity, business selling experiences. Sometimes we play a little music in here. This video is I'm going to be taking you on a trip to Maine. I made a very significant multiple purchases on an online auction. <clears throat> I normally, actually it's the first time I've ever did an online auction i do go to auctions uh occasionally for sure if if there's obviously the right stuff but i've never spent this amount of money on books before it, it was pretty nerve-wracking my heart was racing like crazy but um i was confident in the buy uh, i don't necessarily expect to flip these things immediately they're quite an investment and they may be a couple of them a little bit of a longer term one but that's okay. I mean, that's kind of a part of this. I, I think I'm, you try to line up buys uh, what you can, but when there's something, when there's something good and delicious, you got to take a move. What do they say? Fortune favors the bold, right? So it's quite a bold buy, real ballsy move. Excuse the language, but it was a ballsy move. I said it again. It was, it was something else. So it's not, they say, uh, what do they say now? Uh, if you ain't in debt, you ain't living. <laughs> so I, I kind of drained the bank account for this one. But I've never been to Maine. I, I'm i I'm really looking forward to it and to see what this state looks like. I'd like to see the water on that side. I wish it wasn't so cold. It's probably co it's colder there than it is here for sure. But I'm either going to leave Monday or something. So I'm trying to prepare for that for that haul. It's it's uh, quite, uh, quite an extensive trip. Well, five and a half hours. It's doable. I'll spend the night. I might even spend an extra night um just just because why not but uh besides the point i think i'll leave you with this and then i just to fill you in real quick i have a ten thousand book lot the part two up in ithaca in the following week so i'm going to be gaining a significant volume of material and also just high-end choice materials right now so this month's a big spending month uh, i really hope it's it's a it's it's a good payday too. I, I want to recoup some of this money, but so I'm going to get cranking in the shop right now. I got to open in an hour. So wish me luck on a good weekend. Right. But, um, okay guys, I'm going to take you on the road. If, if there's anything worth filming, uh, I'll click the camera on and probably gab a bit with you. Um, and in the description will be a part where you could fast forward if this stuff is just a little bit of too long. So, but anyhow, I appreciate all you guys' support out there. Let's get to Maine, baby. All right, I made the pickup. It was a big trip, but I'm in beautiful state of Maine. And I have some of the best books I've ever bought. In. So I can't wait for you guys. In 900 feet, oh. turn right on Rain's Neck Road. So when I get to the shop, I'll start unboxing. I also got a bunch of other pickups that weren't even in the sale. So it was pretty cool. I'll show you this road I'm driving on. Really nice, really nice countryside out here. Really beautiful. Some big houses. This collection actually belonged to a guy named Greg. His last, he created the method of shorthand writing. So um, I have a, actually a book done by him called Greg Shorthand. So. But anyhow, I'll get into the details as to who it was uh, later. But um, right now, I'm going to try to get back home because there's a winter weather advisory. So unfortunately, I'm not going to get to explore this state because now I'm a little stressed because I got a lot of work on my hands to get done. But anyhow, guys, um, we'll, we'll be back at about... A Turn right on Rain's Neck Road. 11 o'clock. I got to get the GPS on, so we'll see you in a minute. Hey, what's going on? I made it back. Thankfully, it's late. I'm whooped. But before I get these books in and head to bed, I want to show you the premier book that I bought that I just can't get over. I think this is such a beautiful book. And then I'll chat with you for two minutes after I show show this off. And um, I'll show you the rest of the finds tomorrow. So let me flip it. Here we go. It's, it's quite large. I got to be real careful because I got one hand this is the works of jeffrey chaucer look at that that's so beautiful i think there was a insignia on the front here but that's faded beautiful calf leather 
let's uh let's take let me give you a look inside here i've never spent so much money on one individual book but um i thought this was definitely worth it someone's book plate <clears throat> pretty cool let me, let's see what we got. It's a very large book. It's like uh, the height is like 16 inches. All right, hold on. I marked them out. I'm still trying to. All right, the works of Jeffrey Chaucer, right here. I zoom out, give you a bigger view. Okay. <clears throat> Compared with the former editions of many valuable, out of which three tales are added, which were never before printed by John Uri, student of Christ Church. Uh, and he died, I believe, before this was published. So, I, I printed in London, 1721. These, the, the plates, I believe, are copper plates. Let me turn the page. The Life of Geoffrey Chaucer. Is this not one of the prettiest books you ever seen? Man, she's a beauty. Take you here just so you could see the detail. I mean, I, I just, I love this book. And I wanted it. So guess what? I got it. Now I'll show you some pages throughout this will not be going on the seller site you have to contact me directly my email is in the description but um this is so beautiful i mean i wish all you could come to my shop so i could let you look at it so my customers that do i think and that have appreciation for, for this will, will really enjoy it let's see but it's got cool illustrations throughout there's another one, Shipman's Tail. I, I'm getting such a kick out of this. I can't wait to look to look through this a bit more. Look how big this book is. Isn't this crazy? All right, I'm going to show you one more illustration. I mean, I, I could I could look through this for a long time. Look at that detail, huh? Zoom in a bit. Ain't that something? So yeah, this is a this this is the best book I've I've ever uh, purchased to date. I I think so. I, I'm I'm I absolutely am enjoying the heck out of it, and it just came in. So yeah, works of Chaucer compiled. What a beauty, huh? All right, guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick look at that Chaucer book. She's a beauty, isn't isn't it? So, I mean, that's that's my favorite individual, you know, book I've purchased to, to date, I'd have to say. Uh, I'm really enjoying the heck out of it. And I'm starting to bring in more material. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is get right to the table and just start showing you all the stuff that, that I brought back from Maine. I wish I could have shown you that state a bit more. It's a really beautiful state. But there's a winter weather advisory um, late at night. And I, I did have planned on staying over and everything and, and, and doing a little exploring. But I'm not going to get caught in crazy chaos. I, I have enough work to do and this just added to it. But um, I will say that, uh, boy, this purchase made me nervous as heck, to tell you the truth. If, if you saw, you know, the first clip, I was very excited. I still am extremely excited. But the preceding couple days, it things started to sink in in terms of, you know, how much is, was invested into this. And, you know, I'm, I was very, still am confident in these buys. And as I continue to grow, you know, this is the right direction for me is to keep making these these uh bigger buys bigger sales um but it it kind of reminded me back of old times of the first few years when i was struggling to to get off the ground and it was almost like a desperation feeling a lot of fear and i was talking to a buddy about this uh, a couple buddies actually about this and those old feelings were being like kind of re-emerging and and of course, the way I handled it back then wasn't always the healthiest. 
and started to slip a little bit too, just, just because of the stress. Um, but you know, it's, it's a part of, I guess, working for yourself and you make it to certain points and you reinvest, double down on yourself. And I mean, that's what I'm doing. So Bitcoin, silver and books, baby. So anyhow, I need to get to bed. I <laughs> need, I got two more bins to bring in. I'm getting to bed tomorrow. We're going right to this table and, uh, I hope you enjoy what I have to show you. All right. So here is a set of books I bought. It's the complete works of Shelley and Keats. It's a 12 volume set complete. Shelley has eight volumes. Keats has four. And these are library edition books. They got nice green boards. Um, I'll pull one here. Um, gold gilt edging. So this was a really nice, nice set. And I'll just take you inside. It was a limited printed set. It's called the library edition. So I'll show you the title page first. Here you go the complete works of Perry Shelley. Turn turn it to the back here. Um, limited to 1,000 numbered copies, of which this set is number 118, 1909. Very nice set. I, I uh, personally know a bunch of Shelley fans out there that may absolutely love this this collection here. So I figured I would show you that one quick and to the next. Here we go. Next set, Peter Pinder, two volume set, 1792. This first volume has all been uh, redone here. Um, beautiful job. See, the ends are new. It's the original. Um, but whoever did it did a, did a really nice job with this, with all the rebindings. Take you to the title page. The Poetical Works of Peter Pinder, a distant relation to the Poet of Thebes, to which are prefixed memoirs and anecdotes of the author, a new edition with editions, 1792. So the actually the author's real name was John Wolcott, and he wrote under the name Peter Pinder. And he was a satirical writer, a poet, obviously, and he attacked, people in the royal society he attacked prominent individuals um here's one on james boswell he started he goes off on a bit in here let me see if i can again working with one hand it's it's not the easiest thing to do here if i can't turn the page I, all right here we go so he goes off on boswell oh boswell bozzy bruce whatever thy name <laughs> thou mighty Shark, hark for anecdote and fame, thou jackal leading lion, Johnson forth <laughs> to eat McPherson, midst his native north. So he goes on and on. It's kind of funny. Um, but I got that nice two volume set. He also was attacking the monarchy. Um, so there you go. Two volume set, Peter Pindar. All right, so here's another huge set that I uh, purchased to get all together. There's 73 volumes plus a couple others. It's the Jesuit Relations and Allied Documents. And I just pulled a handful here um, for you because it's such a large set. They're obviously ex-library, but the majority of these were published for libraries. Um, if anyone's not familiar with the Jesuits, it was a Catholic order created by uh, Ignatius Loyola. Um, but anyways, these publications are pretty rare to get your hands on. And it's complete. And I'll show you the title page. And I'll tell you the significance of the Jesuit order and what they were doing. So this edition, let me see. This edition consists of 750 sets. This is number 399. Jesuit Relations and Allied Documents, Travels and Explorations of the Jesuit Missionaries in New France, 1610 to 1791. There you go. So this one is, uh, I think, 18, 1898. And it's got its uh, typical library markings as so. Hand-cut pages. A lot of the pages haven't even been cut. But the thing is, is that the Jesuits were um, were all over the world basically and uh, these works were written annually printed between 1632 and 1673 pull another one 
And these were reports for the order. So, and they have great historical value. I'll just flip it to myself real quick. See, a lot of the Jesuits, they, they were some of the first to encounter um, native tribes, native Indians and whatnot, and report on their on their mission. And these were written to help also, I believe, raise money for their missions and, and the order. Um, I printed out something here. But the guy, this is the first time it was put into English. It, it was originally written in France, French. Um, but I did highlight something that I found to be interesting. And you would think I'd have it right ready to read. Um, okay, here we go. The relations effectively comprise a large body of ethnographic material. Um, the The person who compiled these works included many other papers, rare manuscripts, and letters from the archives of the Society of Jesus, which is the Jesuit order, uh, spanning a period from the founding of the order to 1791. So it's a real significant historical work. I don't expect this to move very quickly. This is actually the kind of stuff that I get really interested in, in like reading about myself personally. But it is such a beautiful collection. I have it in all these bins here. And actually, let me show you um, a couple other complimentary works that came with it as well. Um, I'll flip the camera. Down. This actually in this box, these are all obviously reprinted, but they're Indian treaties here. Um, the uh, Canada did with the Indians. So I have them all here. Pull these in their pamphlets. And the, this is really cool. I also have some works by um, Francis, Francis Parkman. I read his uh, set before on Jesuit relations. So it was really cool. So there's other complimentary work as well that came that came with this set. But very special, rare set, very, very large uh, set. It's going to take a lot to ship. But I actually uh, was advised by a friend of mine, and maybe what I'll do is uh, contact the Jesuit college and try to see if there be any interest in this set because if they don't have one i'm sure they would love to so i'm gonna give that a whirl but yeah this is one of the big buys of of the uh weekend and one of the best sets that i've ever had in this shop bar none the historical value is is amazing and i really enjoying this uh tremendously if i had the money i'd keep this one myself as well but uh someday okay on to the next so I forgot to tell you, but when I was bidding on that Jesuit set, I uh, it was in the heat of the battle, right? And all of a sudden, I stood up quick from my computer, and I pulled the whole freaking power cord out of my computer, and then went just off. I said, you're kidding me. Yeah, something like that, anyhow. And thank God I had my phone right next to me there. I pulled it up. There's like seven seconds in between bids. And I pulled up, I started hitting bid, 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 bid. And if it would have went for that, if I would have lost it for the price that it was on, I would have been so freaking mad. But uh, it worked out, thankfully, and now I got that beautiful set. So I figured I'd just share that with you. Got got caught up in the moment and uh, <laughs> had one myself. So anyhow, okay, let's keep going. I want to show you this quickly. This is a personal buy. It's a uh, chromiolithograph of the bookworm. Beautifully framed. I got to clean the glass a bit. But by Carl Spritzweg. It's a numbered edition. I always wanted one of these. And, uh, you know, it's like a German Baroque scene here. But I love it. The guy's like lost in a book. See him? Lost in his book. Forgetting where he's at. <laughs> Got a book between his knees there. I thought it was great. I always had wanted this. So there was a beautiful one in the auction, obviously, chromiolithograph again. I said, you know what? I'm buying this one for myself because I don't really buy stuff for myself. So there it is. That's going to hang up in my own little private library. Now, before I get to the other buys of this lot, I'm going to show you at the when I went to pick up everything, because this stuff is really cool as well. It's just such an icing on the cake. Um, the the auction guy said, hey, you know, there was a lot of material that also wasn't 
able to be put in the sale. Would you like to check it out? Of course I would. So I'm going to show you these books real quick. Now, obviously, I, I paid them a little bit, but I got them for a great deal. And then I'm going to show you what's in these boxes here. So I'll just show you quickly a few of the individual books. I left one on the ground. And um, then I'll get to the other. So, A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. First edition book. So, of course, I scooped that up. Scribner's. Apparently, that marked it. Now, the A3.64H, that makes it a true first edition i'll look into that a little bit more but nice copy of orwell's animal farm this was the first edition printed in london of its kind tons of illustrations it's like new um nice facsimile by of herman melville and then check out this scribner's now this is what's interesting about magazines this uh ernest hemingway's green hills of africa was purchased or I'm sorry, purchased, was published in this Scribner's magazine. Five of them. This was the only one they had, but of course I still scooped it up. Um, in all five, if you had all five, it'd be like 500 bucks. Um, I made a video on buying and selling magazines, and one thing, and I'll make another one about it as well, but the one thing is, is that sometimes in some of the Harper's um, magazines or different ones, authors for the first time, their work was published in them in a series of stories or whatnot, or in newspapers like Edgar Allan Poe was, and they go for some serious money. So it's something to definitely pay attention to when you're buying uh, magazines. Here's a nice book picture, picturing Hemingway's Michigan. Um, this is a large facsimile of the Georgics of Virgil Dryden, 1931. I'll show you inside that quick. Before we get to the rest, John Dryden, really cool. And now I'm going to show you these other ones in a minute, but I'll show you this. This is cool. Hold on. Not that, even though somebody might find that cool. Four American Indian songs. Harmonize and Elaborate by Charles Wakefield Cadman. Really cool. 1909. I mean, stuff like this. Content is right. And I've never seen something like this. This should fetch me uh, a decent little little return. All right, I'm going to show you the rest. So I'm going to take you into this box. See, the room that he took me in, there was a lot of music. And that stuff, I don't really have a lot of luck with. I'll flip it. So, but what I look for is different popular categories um, when it comes to it. So music is not a very popular section. But certain things, say like folk music or maybe a volume set on banjo playing, whatever the case may be, can be very popular, especially if it's early enough. Well, so the side of this box, I see this. I see sheet music. I'm not really overly interested, but I see black and minstrel music, minstrel material. I go, okay, that's neat. So when I open it up, when I open it up, it's all about the content. Old Joe Black. In great shape. I said, okay, this stuff has value to me. Now we can talk. Now we can talk, Turkey. What you gonna do when the rent comes around? See all the black-like imagery, the big lips, all that kind of stuff. This stuff is very popular because it's little brown baby. Because all the political correct world we live in, people are buying this stuff. Oh, them golden slippers. <laughs> okay. Gene Autry there. So, and actually, I haven't even looked through these boxes in Foley. But check out this, guys. Carry me back to old Virginia. Look at that. That is great. This is great stuff. I mean, smoking mokes. To some, it might offend them. But so what the heck would you then? Smoky smokes. So it's a box of this stuff at a Georgia camp meeting. So I have to go through all this, really look through it. This is actually one of my favorite buys, and I didn't, it wasn't even in the auction. I've said my last farewell. Toot, toot, goodbye. See the blackface stuff? What a fine. They made it twice as nice as Paradise, and they called it Dixieland. What a fine, huh? Look at all this. It, 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 so let me see if I can 
because I, I haven't looked through the whole thing. Oh, here we go. Some Indian, Indian content. Keep the home fires burning. I mean, this stuff is early and the content is right. So the rest, the later stuff I left. Let's go through another box. So here's another box of music. This stuff is in a little bit rougher shape, but there's Hiawatha. Put on your old gray bonnet. Come on now, ladies. Put on them bonnets. All right. Um, so it doesn't look like this stuff is the black memorabilia. Again, I got to take my time and work through all this. I mean, but it's really cool stuff to me. Maybe it is to you. I don't know, but to somebody it is. And here's a big binder called uh, Music. Let's open it up and see what we have in here. Similar, similar stuff. There's a beautiful piano in that place. So these are all, like, a lot of them are tied in. Little Annie Rooney. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But, you know, that's what I'm working with here somebody looks like put this put this together and uh is there a date on any of this not seeing a date so kind of neat took a took a jab at it you know just lotted it all together and uh i have another box as well that was pretty cool huh guys some some different stuff music wise and um now i'm gonna get to some of the more uh, some more auction buys <laughs> and we'll get moving here so this next set is called bell's plays now this set is missing volume nine and i think volume 17 and i have a volume of another set here and this is a part of jonathan bell that wrote that compiled these ones but this is um, the British Theater. I can't get a good look at it. Sorry, the lighting and the camera. The, this is a great set. I mean, they were compiled by a man named John Bell, taking the volume one here. 1792, if I didn't say it before. Like, here's A Mask by John Milton. And adapted for a theatrical representation. Um, Theater Royal uh Co Co Covent Garden in the year 1744 and it goes on British Library the Strand bookseller to his royal highness of the Prince of Wales and there's some interesting information um surrounding John Bell so this set I'm gonna have to research a little more and I'm also gonna have to call that auctioneer because I'm I'm this is supposed to be a complete set I'm gonna have to check the listing again but besides the point very nice set um, I'll be able to make some money off of this one, even if it is incomplete, to be honest with you. Uh, beautiful set. It looks like it goes up to, a, it, it was billed as a 23 volume set. Okay, so there's 23, but here's a number 24 as well. So I don't know what's going on here, but um, like I said, I'm just getting these out of the box. And I got to do some research. We look beautiful on a shelf though, huh? So great little set so i got my homework cut out for me let's see who this one's by with this particular set tragedy altered from mr w whitehead really cool huh guys so that's a beautiful little theatrical play set and uh, i'm going to try my hand on that and then while i got it here this was a cool individual book candlelight in time by Paul Dunbar. This is another black um, type of book here, black poetry. Illustrated with photographs by the Hampton Institute Camera Club and decoration by Margaret Armstrong. I thought this was a great book. This was published in 1901. Let me see if the camera, I can make it a little better for you, okay? And uh, poems with with uh beautiful pictures it's such a clean nice book 
I think it's a representation of the of the old old early South. You see this sticking. Like I've seen Civil War uh, pictures of black soldiers in here to accompany a poem. The nice countryside. Those are songs of summer. Just a wonderful, wonderful book. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy with this buy. Lullaby. So anyhow, very nice book. That was another part of the purchase. And I'll take you, let me take you over here. Here was another buy that I had. Um, Explorations of the Far North by Frank Russell, 1898, first edition. All hand cut pages. And just, again, loaded with different pictures. Um, let me see what's here. Just another, another very solid buy for my shop. You know, there was a lot of Canadian stuff, a lot of uh, Native American stuff, but it all, I, it just, for me, it wasn't worth bidding in on. I had to sit back, um, pull out map. Let me take you to the title page. I mean, the thing is, there we go. So, being the report of an expedition under the auspices of the University of Iowa during the years 1892, 93, and 94. The thing is, is, you know, when you're when you're dealing with bidding against collectors as well, you know, they're going to be able to pay, or if they want the book enough, I should say, more. a lot of them are willing to pay, you know, top dollar, so... Um, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, I'll tell you, I'll switch it. My biggest fear isn't always other book dealers that I'm bidding against. It's, um, it's actually the collectors. Let me see if I can, all right, I can't, um, you know, if you have a little old lady sitting there and she wants a piece, she wants a book an antique, she's buying it. And that's the most dangerous one at a lot of these, um, live auctions um if they want it they're gonna buy it so that's actually could turn out to be bigger competition than even your regular book dealers and adam you know i'll recognize other book dealers and um sometimes i lay off items you know i i conversate with them they want an item I, i'll let it go to them if i got lined up sometimes i'll get tunnel vision and it's like mm, i'm not i'm buying this one you know that's just how how it's it's gonna be so and uh get it but Man, I got that uh I got that Ted Kaczynski look going, huh? <laughs> but anyhow, okay, I have one more box of books to show you and then we'll roll. All right, so I'm not going to actually get these out of the box, but it's a big volume set dictionary of Canadian biography in really great condition. I got these for a steal at the auction. So that should sell. They're pretty clean, very nice red boards. Um, so yeah, I've sold a number of books up Canada's way, so I'm assuming one of those guys up there may, may have some interest in a set like this, but, um, so that was a good buy, and, and now before I keep moving, I do have, where do they go? I had actually a couple more cool individual books, uh, minstrel song books, which were really neat, this one. And then that one, so cool early stuff. So anyways, I'm going to flip it to myself. I'm going to close out this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Um, I actually want to show you a few other book sets that have come into the shop uh, this last weekend that are pretty special. So I'll take you over to the cases, um, and I'll just show you what we got here. So here we go. Conquest of Mexico by Prescott, three-volume set. Beautiful calf bound. America's Insular Possession. Possessions, two volumes. Really, there should be a video on itself made of these, but I'm not going to have time. Uh, Equinautical Regions of America, a very um, important set there. And uh, Prescott's Ferdinand Isabella, beautiful fine bound set. So that's what I got for you. Oh, let me take you to the glass. This really shouldn't be in here, but it is. Um, George Washington six volume mix set. Well, deserves to be behind something, but um, this is usually my like New York history stuff. But anyhow, I'm gonna f guys. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all your support. I hope you enjoyed these finds. 
What do you think of that 1721 Chaucer? Isn't that just a beautiful, beautiful looking book? It is to me. I'm sure it is to a lot of you. So, you know, if you haven't, I, I'm, I appreciate you sticking with me through this lengthy video. I hope it was worth your while watching some of these of what I picked up in Maine. And I plan on doing a little bit more traveling this year as, as well. So hopefully, hopefully that happens. And if you're interested in anything, drop me an email. Whatever, hit me up however you do it, and I'll get you more details and more detailed pictures and a description of everything, and then you can make a decision whether or not you uh, are that interested <laughs> and you want to buy it. So um, that's all I got to say. Like and subscribe if you haven't. I got Instagram, Facebook. You can follow me on there as well with Book Peddler, Book Peddler Smithville. All right, guys, take care. Until next time, I'll see you later.